A common strategy in order to come up with a discrete time motion model is to first assign a continuous time motion model and then discretize that one. In this video, we will present two useful results that will enable us to discretize continuous time motion models. We will look at both an approximative method and an exact method for an important model family. So, what do we want to do? Well, we will assume that we are given a continuous time motion model expressed here in terms of a differential equation where we have the time derivative of our state sequence equal to this expression here where we have some function a tilde of our state sequence plus some additive noise. So, for a two-dimensional model, our time continuous motion model could look something like this, where we describe our motion as a time continuous function like this. Now, what we'd like to do is to find a discrete time counterpart to this time continuous model, which we then write like this, where xk here is our discrete time sequence. A key thing to note here is that our discrete time sequence contains samples from our continuous time sequence. So we sample our continuous time sequence at time 0, capital T, 2, capital T, 3, capital T, and so on. And those samples become our discrete time sequence, where k here denotes our discrete time index and capital T is our sampling interval. So if we go back to our example here, we construct our discrete time model by sampling this continuous time model here at time 0, capital T, 2T, 3T, and so on. And what we get is this discrete time model expressing our state at discrete time instances k equal to 0, 1, 2, and so on. The idea and our objective here is to come up with a good motion model expressed in terms of these samples. So one way to do this is to express the distribution of x at time t plus capital T given the continuous time sequence at time t. The reason we would like to express this distribution is because it's the same as expressing the distribution of xk given xk minus 1. So we can think of this here as representing xk and this here as representing xk minus 1. And the distribution of xk given xk minus 1, we know this to be our discrete time motion model, which is then related to this distribution here. Now, we will do this for a variety of different type of continuous time motion models in later lectures. However, the focus of this lecture is to introduce two important results that will be useful for us when we derive our discrete models in the next couple of videos. The first result is the Euler discretization method, which is an approximative method that is quite simple to use. The second result is an analytical solution of linear and time invariant state space models, which gives us an exact expression. Let us first look at the Euler method. Suppose we have a differential equation on this form, which means that on the left-hand side here, we have the time derivative of our state sequence, such that the differential equation describes how the state sequence varies over time. Now note that a tilde here could be a nonlinear function. Now, the Euler method is a quite simple method to approximate the solution of the differential equation here. The idea is to use this approximation of the derivative of the state sequence, where the time derivative is approximated as a time difference divided by the interval. So we have x of t plus capital T minus x of t divided by capital T. So if capital T is very small, then this is a good approximation. And if capital T is large, then this is usually not so accurate. If we look at this, we're interested in finding x of t plus capital T and we can now do that in terms of x of t and x dot of t using this expression. So to start, we can rewrite equation 2 here such that it expresses x of t plus capital T as approximately equal to x of t plus capital T times x dot of t. So we get this by multiplying both sides with capital T and then moving x of t to this side of the equation. Now, I think the result here is quite intuitive. So it tells us that we can take the previous state and then we add t times the time derivative of the state at that time instance. So the rate at which it's changing at the previous time instance. And then we get the state at the next time instance. Now, if we insert this expression for the time derivative here, we get this final expression.
expressed only in terms of the state at time t and the noise at time t. So a nice property with this solution is that we can almost always find an approximate discrete model using this method. Also in those occasions when the original differential equation is nonlinear and possibly intractable to solve exactly. So using this technique, at least we get one approximative model that we can use also in the time discrete domain. To get a more hands-on feeling for Euler's method, here's a simple scalar example. In this case, x dot of t, which is a time derivative of x, is just x of t. And at time zero, it starts at one. Now the task here is to figure out what x of one is, so at time one. So we can see that the time derivative of x is equal to x of t, and at time zero, this is one. According to Euler's method, then x of one is equal to x of zero plus capital T, which is one in this case, times the time derivative at zero, which is one. So we have x of zero, which is one. So we get one plus one, which is two. So what the Euler method basically says is that the time derivative is constantly one over the whole trajectory. So we get this linear trajectory here. So we start at one and we end up at two. And x of t changes linearly between these two points. However, according to the time continuous model, the time derivative changes with x of t. So it grows with x of t. Now, if we solve this differential equation exactly, we get this curve here, where x of t grows exponentially and we end up at 2.7, which is e to the power of one. So, in general, if the time interval is relatively small, the Euler method is reasonably accurate. But if the time interval grows, the accuracy gets worse and worse and worse. And it does so rather quickly. The second result we want to present in this video is the analytical solution to x of t plus capital T when we have a linear system. Suppose x dot of t is equal to a constant matrix A times x of t plus a constant vector b, then we can find x of t plus capital T analytically using a sequence of small steps. The first step is to move a times x of t to this side of the equation, such that we collect the state vector at the same side of the equation. The second step is actually the tricky one, and that's to identify an integrating factor. We do this by noting that if we have a product of a to the power of minus a t, times x of t, then the derivative gets two terms. One where we have x dot of t times the integrating factor, and one where we have x of t times a times the integrating factor. The minus sign here comes from that we have a minus sign here. As you can see, we have one term with x dot of t and one term with a times x of t. And they're both multiplied by e to the power of minus a t. Based on this remark, the idea is that we would like to multiply both sides of this expression with e to the power of minus a t. What we get is this expression, where on the left hand side we realize that this is the time derivative of e to the power of minus a t times x of t. The good thing about this is that it's easy to compute the time integral of a time derivative. It's just to evaluate the function at the end point of the integral. On the right hand side, we had b before, so now we have e to the power of minus a t times b. So what do we do next? Well, we integrate, right? We have a time derivative here, so we can integrate both sides from t to t plus capital T. So on the left hand side here, we just get the end points of this function here. So that is this function evaluated at t plus capital T, which is what we get here, and then evaluated at t, which is what we get here. On the right hand side, we get the integral of this function from t to t plus capital T. So it's an integral of e to the power of minus a tau times our constant vector b d tau. We should recall that we are actually interested in finding x of t plus capital T. And we can do this by moving this term to the other side and then multiplying both sides with e to the power of a times t plus capital T. If we do that, we get x of t plus capital T on the left hand side, which is what we wanted. On the other side, we get e to the power of a times capital T times x of t, 
because this term here cancels out when we multiply by this, and we only get this term left, right? The final term is not entirely obvious, but it's an integral here that we have multiplied with e to the power of a times t plus capital T, and that we'll change the limits of the integration a bit in order to get this expression here. However, this is already a nice expression, and it turns out that we can actually solve this integral analytically. So this is what we found. The continuous state at time t plus capital T is the previous state at time t multiplied by e to the power of a times capital T plus this integral here, which is multiplied by this vector b. Now the question that we need to answer is, what is this integral here? If you think about it, the definition of the Taylor series expansion. So it's i plus a times t plus a squared times t squared divided by 2 plus a cube times t cube divided by 3 factorial and so on. If we would like to integrate this, we can instead take the integral of the right hand side and each term here is the easier to take the integral of. So if we integrate from 0 to capital T, this is just i times capital T plus a times capital T squared divided by 2 plus a squared times capital T cube divided by 3 factorial and so on. So here is an analytical solution to this integral. To conclude, we found an analytical solution for the linear system. That is, we assume that x dot of t is equal to some constant matrix a times x of t plus b. Then if we solve this differential equation and discretize it, we found an expression for x of t plus capital T like this. We end with a self-assessment question for you to think about.